Spec Ops The Line is a third-person military-themed shooter with a focus on a dark and mature narrative, which follows a squad of Delta Force operators into Dubai on a rescue mission. The setting of Dubai really influences the style of combat in Spec Ops The Line. The unique architecture that's there does some really interesting things with our combat space. We draw a lot of inspiration of the way things were built there, like the scale is just really over the top. And as an art team, we use that to, to translate it into our game environment. So all the spacing is bigger, everything is a little bit more grand and, and uh, spectacular. The city's been covered with millions of tons of sand. It really provides sort of a very new and fresh combat experience. One of the elements that's very interesting is the fact that you're quite often walking on what you perceive to be solid ground, but actually you may be walking on a dune that's covering a 30-story skyscraper. During combat, you have to constantly be thinking about where you're standing and where you're located, and you may even tumble through a skylight in a building into an entombed space that's been covered by sand. Throughout the game, the player encounters opportunities to leverage the power of the sand to, to help him basically to kill enemies or open new pathways. As you see sand piled up behind the window, and you shoot the window, and sand comes pouring out. So there's a number of locations in the game where out of the narrative grew an opportunity for us to let the player make a choice. This is a test. Yes, it is. The civilian on the right stole water. A capital defense. The soldier on the left was sent to apprehend him, which he did, killing the man's family in the process. So these are not binary choose A to do the good thing or choose B to do the bad thing types of choices that are presented to the player. When you make a decision in the game, what we wanted to achieve is that you sit there and you really question your own moral and you question your own values. Wow, what happens in Dubai stays in Dubai. After a battle in Spec Ops The Line, there's rarely a situation where all the enemies are dead. They're typically laying on the battlefield, bleeding out in horrific pain and agony. The player can choose to react to that in a number of ways, and one of the ways that he can do that is by utilizing executions and executing those enemies. Since Spec Ops The Line is a realistic shooter and you're up against humans with guns, it was always very important for us to make sure that there is enough variety in gunplay and in enemy behavior, so we created all those different enemy types to make sure that there's always enough variety and fun to fight those guys. All of them? I think we're clear. What about the civilians? Did 33rd get away with any of them? Yeah, they did. The campaign in Spec Ops The Line is heavily influenced by the people who are left there in Dubai after sandstorms have ravaged the region. This element of survival in a combat scenario permeates into the gameplay itself. Many of the conflicts in the campaign actually have to do with those survivors and these elements of them trying to provide for their families and protect them from the situation that they found themselves in. This element of civilians being found in the middle of combat scenarios adds a lot of tension to the combats in Spec Ops The Line. Now the CIA doesn't start when we can't finish. Well, now's the time to prove it, because I'm not telling you shit. No! What the hell? What we wanted to achieve was that the player really not only makes his decisions as the character, but also as himself, as a person, as the human in front of the console. We hope that this invites players to think about what wartime scenarios are really like for the people that are trapped within their confines.